the economic freedom fighters filled the 94,000-seater F&B stadium and the overflow area on Saturday as they marked 10 years of their existence. Party leader Julius Malema said he was proud that the organization managed to prove uh, naysayers wrong. He was supported by other opposition parties, including the African Transformation Movement, the Pan-African Congress, Build One South Africa, Zanian People's Organization's Forum for Service Delivery, and the South African Communist Party. Let's discuss this now. We're joined by political analyst Ibrahim Harvey. Uh, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much uh, for, for your time. Uh, EFF leader Julius mm -hmm. Malema filling the stadium to, to overflowing yesterday in a show of force. I mean, it's a clear show to the governing mm -hmm. ANC that the EFF is growing stronger ahead, of course, of what's expected to be the most uh, uh, contested poll since 1994. What did you make of it? Yes, I mean... Totally. Thanks for having me and uh, good morning to the viewers. You know, uh, I am highly impressed, to be honest with you. I mean, even much more than I had anticipated. You know, I, I watched, I mean, the FNB, it takes 94,000. It was full to the brim, brim and they even allowed people to go onto the pitch. The, I mean, just uh, amazing. And also, to besides the, all the other parties that attended, you know, mm -hmm. Um, Bantu Olamisa's party, and you listen to what he said, you know, at the, at the stadium, you know. He spoke about how the ANC has been thieving, stealing funds from the public state fiscus, and they need to unite to stop this theft of funds. You know, it's a highly significant political. I am certain that it's going to, uh, be to the, to the, to the, uh, favor of, of the EF in the, in the run up to the, the 2024 election, and I'm certain about it. My lemma is very strategic, let me tell you. The whole aim of making a formidable impact to the centenary celebrations with over a million members, don't forget, was to lay a solid basis for the oncoming, you know, 2024 elections and to do well. But I mean, to, to hear Bantu Lemisa speak like that and, and that the EF managed to get so many other parties to attend, that shows you, I mean, really, a lot of forces are rallying, you know, behind the EFF, and the ANC really, I think, is now in even serious, more serious trouble. Mm. If you look at what's going to probably happen, you know, I've said it all along, and I mean, this just actually reinforces my view that the ANC is going to lose 2024 and even end up with 40 to 45 percent of the votes. Yeah. But there's something very important that you need to take note of. You see, there's been an increasing rapprochement between the ANC and the EF in certain municipalities. Mm -hmm. They've hit a problem now. And if you heard what, uh, what uh, Zekalala said yesterday, he, he, he went on and on about the EFF. He spoke about the uh, rela relationship alliance between the EFF and the ANC as unprincipled. Yes, the fact, EFF has got little in common in with the ANC, etc. So yeah. how this is going to go down? you know, uh, in the run-up to next year's election is a very interesting thing. I don't think any ANC leader has spoken with so much distaste about the ANC's uh, electoral coalition in certain areas with the EFF. So how the ANC is going to deal with this, the NEC, is going to be very interesting to see in the, in the run-up to the 2004. But a formidable, very highly impressive you know, uh, uh, centenary celebrations of the EFF, and definitely it's going to work in their favor, I believe, in the run-up to the 2024 election. I was absolutely uh, impressed with that uh, celebrations at the, at the FNB Stadium. Yeah, of course, I mean, just expanding a little bit on what you had to say about uh, ANC Veterans League President Snooki Zigalala, um, you know, speaking very strongly against coalition governments with, with the EFF, I mean, uh, uh, which, of course, is a point of, of discussion, a heated debate within the party about whether or not it should form a coalition with the EFF. If it fails to garner more than half the votes, I mean, that discussion, how many other options are, are now left for the ANC? Should that discussion be really taken up and, and um, you know, um, executed by the ANC? No, I think... Uh Zikilala is, is, is not understanding electoral politics properly. It's not by design and will. Lots of coalitions are forced upon the coalition parties and they're reluctant by, by virtue of the electoral results. And there's no doubt, 
you're going to have next year, the ANC will still end up with the majority of the votes. Even if you t- they take 40 to 45, they will still have the big majority above the DA and the EFF. So the EFF and the ANC is going to be forced into a coalition, whether they like it or not, by the sheer results of next year's election. So, I mean, when, uh, when uh, uh, you know, Zekalala expresses those negative sentiments to the EFF, I don't think he's very mindful of the dynamics of electoral politics. And it will be the first time, I must tell you, however, the ANC has never lost a national election. They've lost local elections, but they've never lost. They're going to lose next year. We're going to sit with a national coalition government for the first time in post-apartheid South Africa. But Zikalala's reading of the situation, he might have good reasons for it, a distasteful uh, comments and critique of the EFF, mm. but uh, the real politic called that uh, is going to dictate otherwise they're going to be in, in a coalition. Uh, whether they like it or not, uh, I'm talking about the ANC. And I think the ANC knows that better than it seems that Kalala does, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, can't, you can't run away from that, you see. It's the electoral results that force upon even reluctant partners to enter into coalitions. And you've seen it at municipal level, not because they love the other party, but in spite of the disagreements, they forced into coalitions. Absolutely. Uh, and yesterday um, at that rally, we saw a lot of young people attending um, the EFF's rally. And uh, with that, of course, uh, the focus is going to be uh, very aggressive to ensure that uh, the youth vote is garnered. Young people are encouraged to yes. register to vote and, and participate in elections, which is, is imperative. Um, we heard Malema taking a swipe at Gauteng Premier Banyaza Lisufi for that uh, Nasi Spani uh, project initiative. He says that um, what Banyaza Lisufi has essentially done is, is bribe young people so that they can vote for the ANC and that that 7,000 rand stipend is not a stipend. It's a bribe. I mean, that speaks to um, how the, the, the youth vote and unemployed young people are really going to form a big chunk of of the outcome of, of the elections. Absolutely. You must remember, however, that the electorate is mostly young people, even if you talk up until 35. And uh, Malema, uh, this is the reason why they ex- enjoyed such spectacular growth from 2000. I mean, over a million uh, members, you know, at a time when the populace is very uh, skeptical and cynical towards established political parties, they enjoy that growth. But Malema's base which is in fact going to, uh, you'll see it next year. You see the, 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 the black youth and the so-called African youth in particular to use the statistics of Africa's uh, highly racialized uh, uh, language is going to be critical to the outcome. And Malema is aware of this. I'll tell you, the EFF is in, in the prime position to take advantage of Never before, you know, Vavi used to like to talk about a jobless bloodbath. It is worse than ever before, and especially with the so-called African youth. And I have no doubt that sentiments towards the NC is so bad at the moment that a lot of the black African youth in particular is going to throw in their load a lot. If you don't have a big stay away, which is also possible, or a combination of a significant stay away and a rise in the electoral power of the EFF from around 11%, which it has had. I think really the EFF, if you look at the situation on the whole and the very impressive centenary celebrations, the EFF could climb towards 15%, which would be really historic and massive even if it, if it did reach 15%. Yeah. But it's a new ball game, and Malema has got his own uh, ambitions, you know. I mean, he even told Afri Forum's lawyers last year, you better be careful who you're talking to. Yeah. You're talking to the future president of South Africa, you know. So very interesting times, and uh, you know, what has happened has actually highlighted the importance. I agree with the sentiments of uh, Malema's critique of Les Sufi, to be honest with you. I, I agree with it, you know. Uh, although there's been times that uh, the EFF has also been accused of renting a crowd and filling stadiums up with people, with parcels, a lot of things. I, I agree. I think he's right about Lesufu. And the ANC knows it is a very serious trouble, so it will do lots of things to try and attract the vote, and especially that of uh, black, the youth, who are the most disenchanted, alienated electoral constituency in this country at this moment. So how are they going to cast their vote next year? And I'm afraid 
afraid to say, I don't think many of the disenchanted black youth is going to throw their votes with the ANC. Yeah. Uh, I doubt it very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, a point of view. Uh, th that's how we sum it up. Thank you for your time, political analyst Ibrahim Harvey. Uh, of course, uh, I've got to make a correction. Uh, as I made mention of our, our introduction and those in attendance, it was, in fact, uh, Satu at the EFF rally and not the SACP. 